We'll do something a little different. You know, we're always trying to change it up over here. Let me turn on the rest of my lights and we'll get, we'll get to it. Our client's gonna be here shortly and I'm just kind of getting everything set up and cleaned up. Hope you guys are ready to lock in. This cut's gonna probably, it's probably gonna take about an hour. I'm not gonna skip any steps. And I'm gonna show you guys literally every single thing I do um, to get the best haircut. And then I'm also gonna try to get like a really good photo. I have my camera here uh, as well. So we'll work our way through all of those things. So right now I'm just kind of loading up my razor, spraying down my tools and making sure everything's nice and clean for my next client. So I've seen some, uh, I see some comments, man, going, and there's a lot of experts out there on the haircut. And there's a big difference between being an influencer and actually being a good educator. And I honestly consider myself a gifted communicator and educator more so uh, than, a, than an influencer. So I'm gonna actually explain every step. And while we're sitting here, you guys check it out. I put the other lid on the Mr. Cartoon unit. And I'm actually going to um, use a different clipper though because I got that video dropping, so I don't wanna waste it. But this is what we're gonna be using today. We're gonna be using the Rogue. And this Rogue has just the normal fade blade that comes on it. And I honestly think this is probably the best money you could spend if, if you're looking for a clipper that's really good for blending and especially good for like say fine hair and mostly it can remove bulk, everything. Uh, but at the end of the day, when we're fading hair that's this difficult to fade, I definitely want to pick up the right tool to do that. So the only product that uh, I use from Andis, a little bit of cool care, actually not good for your blades, but good for sanitization purposes. It's a disinfectant. And then we're gonna be using the Sabre a little bit, so I'll spray that one off too. This Sabre's kinda, it's been around for a long time. It has a taper blade on it, and honestly, this thing is probably, it's been ran over by a truck. It's, it's seen better days, it's seen better days. So where are you guys tuning in from? I got I gotta use the front facing camera right now. I'm gonna see if I can get somebody else uh, to hold the camera once my client gets here. But wh where are we tuning in from? I'm gonna tell you a funny story. You guys see this little knot on my head? My son, my son thought that he'd be cute. I got it was his birthday yesterday, and I got him these Lincoln logs that are like magnetic and pretty heavy. And what's he do? He pulls one out of the box and throws it right at my freaking head. Busts me right in the forehead. I started bleeding and everything. Page of Styles is from Buffalo. Buffalo in the house. Don't worry, boys. We'll be back. I'm not worried about Josh Allen like everybody else. I, I, I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried, but not that much. So we're going to be using the Pegasus trimmer from Johnny B. Essentially, if you guys have a hitter laying around or a protege, and you just put this, this one blade on here, it makes this thing, you know, really hit well. So when it comes time to do the lineup, we're going to use enhancements. We're going to do everything. And I'm gonna show you guys a trick that I use to get my pictures to come out. We got the uh, Rebel Capes in, so that's good. So hopefully he shows up soon. But before that, um, I think I just wanna show you guys a little bit of my station. Yo, if you guys wanna cut hair faster and stay organized, it's, it's, really, it's really as simple as this little bar right here. When I take one of my guards off of this, I know exactly which one I took off and I know exactly where to put it back. And I'm never looking for anything, especially the half guards. These are the new tight half guards. So I'm never looking for anything. I know exactly where everything is and it's all staying nice and organized on my table. So the other thing that's cool, the other thing that's cool is having a mat that has these magnets on it. It gets things up and out of your way and you can see exactly what you need and just get right to it. So for those of you guys who are members, I don't know if you guys checked out the first version of the six phases, uh, but that was released yesterday. And we're gonna try to walk through a portion of that, but this is gonna be one of those deviations uh, to our process. So while we're waiting here, I wanna show you guys a short that I'm about to release, but essentially you're gonna see that I'm gonna put in my line. It's gonna look like a harsh line but I'm actually going to tip my trimmer out away from the head. What that does is that moves the cutting blade further away from the head. And if you've ever seen a hard part that looks like a road, like seriously, 
it looks like a road. There's, that's usually because whoever did it, when they put it down, they're touching that cutting blade to the surface and they're not able to stay accurate with that. So if I wanna put a soft guideline in, I can actually tip this out and I can bring this down with the grain. As I come closer, angling it down, that's when it's gonna cut close and it's gonna cut the closest when I go up against the grain with it right side up. And actually there is another step that you can use if emergencies happen, you don't have your tool set up correctly, you can also push up with it on this way. And what that's gonna do, that's kind of like a raking technique. That's what some people I've heard it called. Um, when they do that, that's gonna cut super, super close. So that's, that's what I'm gonna wind up using to put in my line. Now, my two trimmers, one of these, this one is set really, really close. And I'm not gonna use this for any type of debulking really. I use this for emergency skin line removing, but mainly making sharp lines. And this one is the one that I have set back a little bit further that I use for pretty much the majority of everything, um, including blending and putting in lines on say like areas that I don't really need to have the harshest, you know, on the neck, underneath the chin, which I would never cut. I mean, this beard is beautiful. Why would I ever cut that, you know? So keep in mind that there is a fair amount of manipulation that you can do with both your trimmers and your clippers. Same thing here, you're gonna see me begin my blending step by actually holding it out here with it in the open position. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna leave the hair fairly long, but then I'm gonna begin angling the butt end of this down and I'm gonna actually get that open taper length. So this client has like somewhat waves on top, so we're gonna to try to get those to lay down. He doesn't really uh, particularly wear um, waves or work hard to keep them or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's essentially uh, what we're after. He's supposed to be here at 11, and it's it's 10:59. So hopefully, uh, he shows up any minute. And the last thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need a comb. So I'm actually going to get two combs here. This comb here is really skinny. It's gonna help. I'm gonna show you guys some tricks that you can use your shears to help do some of this blending. And the hair, um, his hair is, is full of all kinds of little potential problems that you could run into. So we're gonna address, like there's a thin side, there's a thick side. He said, why do clients show up late so much? I know, I know, they do. Sometimes they do, most of the time he's on time though. But that gives me a chance to show you guys this. I don't know if it's backwards, but this is, this is a plaque I won for the longest drive. It was 336 yards, that's what it was. 336 yards and, uh, in, that, in that tournament. So that was, actually, that was actually pretty fun. So also behind me, we're growing our product wall. And I know a lot of you guys think that everything on here is, is gamma, but that's not true. There's, there's some wall, there's some JRL, there's some Babyliss. Everything that's on this wall is stuff that I've done videos on or I've reviewed. Um, the, the box for this station mat, the organizer, if you wanna cut hair faster, staying organized is kind of the key. Or what if I said it like this? Cut hair slower, make less money. My five-step approach to going broke. One, stay disorganized. Two, run around your chair instead of spinning it. It'll make you look more dynamic. You know, that's, there's just like a couple like little harebrained things that you can honestly do um, to save time. So one more product, I think I'm gonna want to get some mousse to lay his hair down because he's gonna have like a couple of flyaways going on. And we're gonna get started. Give me one second, y'all. There ain't, there ain't much left. All right, there ain't much left. But, uh, all right, listen, man. He's two minutes late. But when he gets here, you guys got to let him know. You guys got to let him know, you know, why you, why you late? What's up, Neil? You still use the Ergo? Nearly every day. He said, uh, Adam Leitner, he's in the house. He said, don't worry, my Dallas Cowboys, the chosen one. Yo, the Cowboys... Um, I, don't, I don't know if, if the Giants were, were really just bad or if y'all are just good, but y'all look, look serious. Y'all look serious. Zane Fox tuning in from Virginia. 
Shout out from Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo Sky, Jason L. Dean. I was just at the concert. You know, I love that dude. Um, Scott, Scotland, huh? Ed Edinburgh, am I saying that right? Edinburgh, Scotland. Los Angeles, Cali. Buffalo, New York. New Jersey. We got people all over the country and outside of the country. Candy, is that is that a place? I don't I don't know where I don't know where Candy is. <laughs> is that? All right, you guys. Um, this is one last thing I want you to do before the client gets here. I want you to sound off in the comments the biggest struggle that you have dealt with when learning how to cut hair. What is the biggest struggle that you've dealt with while learning to cut hair? So I'm going to take you over to this board real quick. And we're going to just show you this board has not been used for some time. So I'm actually going to spray some cool care on it. I'm going to wipe this off. And I'm sorry if the camera works a little shaky, but I don't have a cameraman at the moment. Most of you guys do not understand the relationship between your skin line. So let's say that that's our trimmer line right here. And underneath it, we use our electric shaver. Now we are going to use our open taper. So I'll put OT. Most of you guys don't understand the relationship between skin and your open taper portion. All right. So skin trimmer and clipper, they all have to make sure they blend well. That's why it's so important that you have a trimmer that is set really close. And that would be this one that I'm using today is the Johnny B. A trimmer that is not set so close, that would be my saber. So that will allow me to take out this line and be able to remove it no matter how harsh I put it in. It won't matter. All right, the other thing is, if my trimmers are set super close, then that means I need to have a clipper that's set very close. And that's why I have this Rogue. It is zero gapped. And the way we zero gap it is by using this little tool right here. I love using this thing. And I can actually take any one of my machines. I could just set it under here. And you guys could see um, how close it is, if it's crooked, if it's, if it's overlapping. And that makes life quite a bit easier. So... As long as I have these things set up correctly, that means when I go in to do this process, I'm going to have a clipper that will be able to remove this trimmer line no matter how harsh it is. And then when I further manipulate the clipper, it's going to be easy. So let's say I put this in with the clipper in the open position. There's a few ways I could attack this. I could close it one click at a time and stay just underneath. I can close it the next click, stay just underneath. I can close it the click after that stay just underneath, and then I'm gonna have the entire thing blended out. One of the things that I do a lot, when I put in guidelines, you're going to notice that I use the tipping out method. I set in my guideline, and then I angle it down. Then the other thing you're going to notice is when I begin blending, that's usually going to take place on an angle. And I've talked about this a lot in other things. And yes, I'm using the dubs, I'm using the new tight guards and I have my full set of dubs on here. So I really only use the one guard and the half guard. These function just like the one and the half guard from wall. So that's pretty much it. I think I just heard my clients show up. So we're ready to get started now. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. If you guys don't have the tight guards, you, you can go ahead. You can use the wall half guard and you can go ahead and you can use the the wall number one. But beyond that, the dubs are just so much better. Uh, they're more secure and they really blend well, especially that one and a half. If you look at how many teeth are on this one and a half, like there's, there's a lot of teeth on here. So at the end of the day, um, I, I really love the system that I have in place right now, but it's taken a while for Stylecraft and Gamma uh, to, to develop that half guard and that one guard so that it functions like the wall. Yeah. Let's go, Maxwell. They're going to throw shade on you. I've been live. <laughs> so what's up, brother? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Hey, you look like you lost weight. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, y'all. The client is in the house, and we're about to get started here. He's, they're throwing shade on you because he was a little late. <laughs> 
tell you, man. He was hitting the gym. That's why he lost all his weight. Had to do something. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, we're going to get him taped up. I, I noticed that actually a lot of you guys don't even know how to put the neck strip on the right way, so I might as well just show you that real quick. You don't want to tie it in a knot because that's going to get hair all over his neck. The best thing to do is to just kind of fold it over halfway, pin it here, and then get your cape on here. Now it's actually going to prevent hair from getting him, and it's also going to stop stuff from getting under his neck. But there's one more thing I'm going to use. You guys already know what it is if you've been watching the channel. And also if I have a clean one, which I'm not sure I do, but usually I will use one of the Philip Wolf neck guards. But I'm not going to waste any more time because I think they're out there somewhere. I have a couple clean ones, but yeah, that's a better way to put the neck guard on. So let's get started. Same thing as usual, buddy? Yes, sir. All right. And the last cut um, that I filmed, if you guys wanted to see a more concise version of this where you can still see every step, it's on the members only tab. This video will in all likelihood be set to members only by the end of the day. So... I'm just going to comb through his hair. I'm going to show you a couple of things before we get started. One, this side's pretty good. Two, I see, you know, I got to be really careful where the growth pattern switches directions. And three, this side right here is very light. So even if I do every single step correct, there's a very good chance that this might not come out perfect, which is why we're going to deviate from the system just a little bit. So. I'm going to begin with the number two, and we're going to start by going with the grain, now that I've combed it out. Got one of my big globe lights all in my way. Move that over here a little bit. So yeah, I'm just paying attention to the growth pattern over here. I can see which way I can bring it safely, and if you guys got any questions, Throw them in the comments, I'll get to them. I'm trying to pay attention to that and pay attention to this, so I'll get to your questions you know, as we go. I'm not putting a ton of pressure down. I'm gonna have a few other steps to do um, to get the top finished, but this is phase one. Phase one is just removing bulk, and that's all I'm trying to do in this step. So if you guys been watching the channel too, you'll also know that fine hair is typically very easy to remove the skin line the harsh skin line, all right? Thick hair, if I put a harsh skin line in it, I'm gonna need a little bit more room to blend that out. So this comes with time and experience that I know this, but over the years of practice and doing this stuff and understanding that there is no perfect system for every single client, that's why I developed the six phases. And the six phases can be done in order or you can break the order based on the client and the recommendations that you're going to learn throughout the program. So we got this laying pretty good. I'm going to go in his crown. Making sure that I stay with the grain. There's going to be some areas of hair that are going to be really difficult to stay with the grain. His isn't too bad, but he does have kind of like a triple colic going here. But it's not going to matter towards the end of the cut. some of my prep work for later. I'm just gonna throw like a tiny bit of mousse in the top of his hair. And I'm gonna just kind of push it forward. I'm still gonna do a little more cutting up here, but I wanted to try to bring a little bit of the wave back and get the hair laying down. So when I come back and I do the edge up, I'm able to see that a little better. And that's gonna kind of harden, harden the hair. And when I'm cutting the sides, that's gonna give it time to lay down and dry. It would be better if I put like, you know, a do-rag or something on his head to really hold it down, but obviously I can't do that and cut at the same time. So, all right, let's begin by putting in our skin line. Just like we talked about in the beginning of the show, I'm gonna make sure I tip it out this way a little bit, but I also wanna make sure I curve it. So I'm just gonna be using the corner for now. I'm gonna start at about the top of the C cups and we're gonna get that thing put in nice and light. 
not really too worried about getting rid of all of it just yet, but I want to make sure that the beginning step is coming down with the grain. Now once I've done that, I can flip this trimmer upside down. And I'm going to get very close to that line and begin flicking out. You got to use the right tool for the job. And then right here, when you have clients that their hair is growing so close to their ear, um, the trimmer is the right tool to use in that portion. But I also have my skin machine and that's better for removing big swaths of bulk. So that's pretty good. I usually will go to about the occipital bone back here. And if you notice, I dropped it down a little bit. It's just really out of habit more than anything. I always drop it down just a little bit in the back to make sure that I provide myself some room. I'm gonna turn this light up a little bit so you guys can see this a little better. I'm using the front facing camera and uh, it's, it's never gonna look as good as, you know, one of my real cameras would. But there we go. We got that in right there. I like that. I'm gonna flip them to the other side. And on this side, I'm gonna try my best to match it up. It might not be perfect, so you're gonna go in and you're gonna adjust it a little bit. I'm kind of looking at his eye line and I can see that I wanna start about right here. Same thing. Not only am I using just the corner, but I'm also tipping it out slightly. So I'm not getting the, the full um, harsh line out of it just yet. I don't really want that yet. I'm just trying to put in an accurate skin line uh, that matches up well with the back. And I do think, you know, there's definitely some adjusting you can do later to, to make this perfect, but I do think you should work pretty hard to try to get this part of the haircut as close to accurate as possible because your, your other steps that follow this are, are gonna really be based on this foundation. So take your time, make sure you're happy with your skin line, make sure you like the way it curves compared to the other side. And then we'll flip it upside down. We'll come close to this. I'm gonna have to spin them around a few times, check it, make sure it's good. But love this uh, Saber trimmer here. This is arguably the best trimmer ever made. Very quiet, very good. And if you guys want to use any of the tools that you see me using in this video, you guys can use the code Eddie. And now with Gamma or Stylecraft, you can save 15% off your tools. And the truth is you, you do need some good quality tools, but you need at least, you need at least two trimmers and two clippers. And you need to set them up the way we did in the beginning of this live when I explained everything that we were going to do. I showed you guys the board and we see what's going on here. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this off with my trimmers, but there's been plenty of cases where it might make more sense to use a machine like the skin, where this will remove the hair quicker. But in this case, it's not really the case. He said, uh, all right, so let me see what these comments are saying here. He says, it's never too late to get started cutting hair. 39, I got licensed 41 and the career has great momentum at this point. I started at 32. So how do you mean by tipping it? So I'll show you guys right now, I'm cutting as close as possible, the, 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 as close as this trimmer is capable of cutting. My, my Johnny B trimmer is set to cut a little closer than this. But if I tip this out, if I tip this out like this, it's not gonna cut near as close because I'm moving the cutting blade away from the skin. As I tip it down, the cutting blade is coming in closer contact with his skin. Shout out if you guys are getting some good information out of this. This is a free cut. I'm going out of my way. Shout out to Maxwell for, for coming in here and letting me do this on him. Instead of us talking about all the conspiracy theories and craziness we talk about normally <laughs> that we get us banned off YouTube for life. <laughs> but, yo, uh, if you guys are liking the content, do me a favor. Smash that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you're watching this pre-recorded, you know, you drop a comment, it's, it's all love here. I work really hard to try to educate people on YouTube for free. And uh, YouTube has consistently shit on me for doing that. So the little bit of help I get out of you guys could, could change the momentum for the better. So we'll now switch to the Rebel electric shaver. Um, this is a very fast, very powerful electric shaver. And I'm going to give you guys a quick close up here. Let's see if I can actually pinch zoom this. Oh, I can. Look at the power I have. 
All right, so we'll show you guys exactly what's going on. The bottom doesn't matter. I can push this as hard as I want. But as I get closer to that line, which this little light is blinding me, so I'm turning it off. So as I get closer to this line, I'm going to flip this upside down, come with the grain, flick up towards it. But my goal, my main goal here is to not create any line, like the little line I have, in between that and where I want with my trim. So now I can stretch the skin a little bit. I can flick up at this. And my goal is to not create more work for myself later. A lot of you guys are having trouble right here. This is one of the reasons why you struggle to get your skin lining out so bad because either you put it in too harsh and you didn't do certain things or your machine is not set up to remove that harsh guideline. So we'll continue this right here. Now another tool that I use for this a lot would be the Uno, and I'm gonna show you why. It's not just because it's small. It's because I'm able to really fine tune my connection with this one. I can just use one corner or the other um, when I do this. I would never wanna cut hair without a single foil electric shaver anymore. And this being, you know, one of the least expensive ones out there. Babyliss has a great one. It's like $150 or something. This one's $50, they do the same thing. So also, I can get into these places that it's difficult to reach. It's just a great machine for, for this purpose right here. So let's zoom back out. Hopefully that's uh, sinking in for you guys. And I'm gonna continue I think I went out too far. Let's go back in just a little bit. All right, right there. That's, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to finish up with the electric shaver. You can push as hard as you want. Let the blades eat down here. You guys can see how fast this is. And um, if I have my other one, a lot of times I'm actually using two when I do this. I just use two electric shavers because this is one of them things that you can do fast and get it out of your way or it can take forever. Like if you're using like a wall finale or something like that, those machines used to be so slow compared to this, the FX3 or a lot of these other good machines that are out here. This really has taken a lot of time off of my haircuts, just having a tool uh, that can do this. So as I get closer to that line, I'll flip it this way, start trying to come with the grain and flip up at it. So the other thing that's pretty cool, man, I want to I want to shout out you guys and thank you. I'm, I'm closing in for the first time, uh, I think, ever. I, I got about a million views this month on my channel in the last 28 days. So the, the changes that we're making are working and, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for it. The other thing that can really make a skin fade look bad is when you when, when you don't actually get it all the way down the skin, you're going to notice on a lot of your clients there's gonna be different directions that it grows in. You really wanna make sure that you feed your hair in every direction and feel it with your fingers and just make sure um, that you've got it all. And honestly, this is still phase one. Anybody in this room at this point, I feel like if I worked with any of you guys in this room, if any of you were in front of me, you would be able to do this. This particular part of the haircut is so important to get right. And in all honesty, it's very easy to do um, if you take your time and, and departmentalize it. All right. Phase two would be clipper over comb, which obviously we're not going to do because this hair is short. And phase three would be cutting the top with scissors, which we're not going to do because we've already handled that in phase one. So we're going to jump into the blend. But before I do that, I just want to double check um, my line all the way around Make sure that I like it. See if there's anything that, that I can adjust. Try to make it as perfect as possible. The time that you will save in the end um, by, by detailing and fighting with it, um, you can save a lot of that time here and now. So with fine hair, we're gonna have to skip some steps. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to skip some steps um, in a major way because this side of his hair is not as thin as this side of his hair is. And I mean that in a density way. Density is the amount of hair per square inch. So with all that out of the way, I'm actually gonna begin this 
I'm gonna begin this with a number one, and I'm gonna click it two clicks open. One, two. I call this the two click and flick. I use it all the time. And uh, let's see what these comments are saying here. He said, two biggest fade struggles at this point, getting my shadow line right where I want it, and then when to skip guards, which is good. I'm glad you're watching this because you're gonna see how skipping these guards is gonna help big time. So I am going to tip this clipper out away from his head. I wanna get an idea of what this is gonna do. And then with curly hair, you never really get to know what you're cutting off until you comb it back down. So just by tipping that off the head, kind of flicking into it, I'm able to see exactly what's going on only after I comb it down. And I'm not really trying to blend or anything like that. I'm trying to put in a line, a guideline, about the width of, say, like my pinky. And I have noticed a fair amount of people not understanding when and how to tip the clipper. And usually, tipping the clipper too much and doing these advanced techniques will get you into trouble. So if you don't feel confident doing that, there's two things you can do. One, make sure that you make a good effort to hold the clipper flat like I am right now. And flat is here. It is not here or here. Flat, right where it curves. If you make an effort to hold that flat throughout the whole haircut, you could still get a pretty good haircut. It's just gonna take you more time. As you progress and you advance, you can start doing some of the clipper manipulation that I talked about, where we can get a lot more out of a single guard, a single clipper, a single trimmer, um, as, as we learn how to do that. Now back here, it's much thicker. I'm not so much worried about skipping steps back here. I know that this area has got enough length where I'm not too worried about it, but we'll stay in our lane. You already know this is gonna come out perfect, right? I'm just, I'm just warning you guys. <laughs> I'm just warning you. You already see how I've set myself up in such a way that I really can't fail. Um, that's, that's just it. And one of the main reasons why we did what we did with the one, why I didn't attack with an open taper like you see everybody else do it, even myself, on the majority of haircuts, that would have been fine. But it's this area right here that concerns me because I knew that this was finer than the rest of it. And I also know that this is gonna take less steps to look good. And if I go through every step, what will more than likely happen is I wind up pushing the haircut too high on the side. So I don't wanna do that. So that's exactly why I chose to handle this in this way. All right, so now I'm gonna ignore this line for now and I'm gonna begin building my connection into the top. It's just so important that we keep this area dark, that this becomes like my main focus uh, during this haircut, it becomes the main focus. So I did the top with the two with the grain. I have a one and a half and I have it in the closed position. And I'm going to go ahead and start to try to refine out the bridal ridge area and get some of this hair to lay down. I'm coming with the grain. It's always worth trying this on really curly hair. Sometimes this might not be, you know, the best step to use. And in some areas it might not work at all, but it's never gonna hurt you to take that guard with the grain. I didn't, I didn't hear what he said, the Coca-Cola design. This is, this is this what you're talking about? The Mr. Cartoon verse? You guys wanna see me bust this out for a second? I had a feeling somebody might ask for this. I have a whole video on this clipper coming out. You guys can hear how quiet this is. This is actually uh, the Rebel. I'll let it cut a little bit, you guys can hear it. But this is the Rebel and it's made in collaboration with one of the greatest tattoo artists on the face of the earth. He's probably done a lot of famous artists that you've, you've listened to or you've heard of, but his name is Mr. Cartoon. And the guy uh, decided to put his artwork on one of our clippers and you know, I just think I just think it looks so badass. It might be backwards in the camera because I'm using the front facing camera, but I think it's just so cool um, that this finally happened. This has been in, in talks. I remember um, Stylecraft telling me that they wanted to do this almost two years ago when we were at a show in, in Chicago. So that's, that's how long this has been in the works to, to make this actually possible. 
But I was trying to show you guys too that you don't have to spend crazy amounts of money on tools. And when it comes to blending, the Ergo Clipper to me will, will always still have a leg up on almost anything out there. So once I got done with just going with the grain on that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick to my two click and flick with the 1.5 on, I'm gonna click two times up, one, two. And now I need to really make sure I'm combing the hair. I'm gonna just try to kind of keep it flat and let it kind of glide into that other section. I'm only using um, like half of the blade because right now I'm actually trying to blend. And you guys can see that some of these areas are really starting to make a good connection. And that curliness of the hair can really complicate things and make things difficult. And once you cut a piece of hair that you shouldn't have cut, you never do get it back. So it's, it's more like just trying to be careful. I'm gonna open it up all the way now as I continue to build this connection into the top. And because I went with the grain, I was able to soften that a little bit. And here, uh, I already did that when I had the Rebel on, so nothing's really gonna come off there. And over here is where you really gotta start to be careful. And it might even be worth it to me to throw a number two on here just because I really want to keep this dark. I don't really want to see um, my darkness in this area disappear. And this, this area is going to be the area that um, it would. If, if I made a mistake, this is where you would see a mistake show up. So I'll flip over to the number two. I'm going to put it two clicks. I always do two click and then kind of flick. And I'm only using one or two of the teeth. You guys can see how I'm, how I'm touching the head. That's me using that, that clipper manipulation. And with any curly hair, I can't really see what effect each stroke is having. So I'm looking to take like two, three, maybe four strokes, and then check. And I'm starting to really like the connection that I'm getting into the top. I will even switch over to a number three. And that's what's so great about having this station set up this way is I don't have to hunt or look for anything. Like literally I'm looking at the client's hair, I'm looking at my camera, and I'm able to just set these right back down with a quick glance exactly uh, where they go. So the two, go back to the two. Let's finish off this back piece. Just using a corner, really trying to get that blend. Kind of coming across, across the grain patterns. Remember, a two is what I used on top, so it's it's never going to hurt you to come back with the grain a few strokes and, and see if you can get any of that to come out any cleaner. You're going to notice that sometimes when you're working through your steps, it's going to look like, oh, God, I made a really light line, but the moment you comb it down, that's when you get to actually see uh, what you got going on. Now, as you guys can see, this, this connection to the top is starting to really come together nicely set myself up in a way that, that this bottom line is going to be so easy to get out, it's going to be laughable. And, you know, we're going to start to, we're going to, start to do that right now. This is where tipping the clipper will really help. And one thing that uh, I don't see enough thumbs up, man. 40 of y'all watching, only 14 thumbs up. And I'm about to give you guys some game right now on, on doing this and, and making this part a little bit easier. We're going to start with our clipper fully open. These are the rogues. This is... Uh, essentially, it's an ergo. I have an ergo box, uh, but it's a little bit out of frame there. That one is. I have another ergo box right here. Essentially, this is an ergo, but this is the cheapest version of the ergo. You get the combo for like, I think you get the clipper and the trimmer for like less than $200. So, he said, do you know the person in the chair? Yes, I know him like the front of my hand. All right, we're going to begin by tipping this clipper out. And I'm just going to feed a little bit into this guideline. This is gonna be a super, super soft guideline because I have this clipper. Let me shut off this light because it's blinding me. I'm gonna spin them this way so you guys can really see. And we'll zoom in some. Okay. So now you guys are really gonna be able to see exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about clipper manipulation. I'm tipping this out and I'm putting in that same little guideline. It's gonna cut in some spots, it might not cut, but because I have this clipper all the way tipped out like this, 
that's going to start to really soften any line that I might I might incur towards the top. Now I'm going to begin lowering the butt end of the clipper. I have not changed its setting. I'm listening for I'm listening for it to cut. And I still haven't reached the bottom of what it's capable of. Tell me right now in the comments, is this something that you guys do when you're blending out difficult hair or when you're blending out hair in general? Because look at how much I was able to accomplish and only now am I actually holding it flat. I mean, look at how much fainter that line has gotten and how little work I've left for myself towards the top portion of this blend. So if I turn on this light, you guys will be able to see that a little better. I mean, look at how faint that is. And I have not moved the clipper one iota. I'm just using clipper manipulation. This is, this is just one of those big, big keys that you can use that nobody really talks about or nobody really knows about. I think a lot of people just do this type of stuff intuitively a lot of the time. So now we're gonna begin actually blending it. I'm gonna close it all the way and bring it back two clicks and I'm only going to use the corner, and I'm also using that manipulation. I'm tipping it out slightly, see what that does. Now I'm gonna close it down. I'm not closing the clipper, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm lowering the handle. Boom, boom, boom. Now I have it all the way flat, and I'm able to actually see exactly what I'm doing. I know I can open this a little bit. Notice how easy that trimmer line came out. It was because I actually, it may have appeared that I put in a harsh guideline, but I actually put in a fairly soft guideline that was very easy to remove. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now I can, I can feel free to go ahead and I can close my clipper a little bit further. Now I'm really got to be careful though. With the clipper completely closed, I'm tipping it out slightly. So here's, here's the move. I'm tipping it out slightly and I'm only using the corner. And I'm using kind of like my middle finger as a brace. I'm not flipping you guys off. <laughs> I'm using that middle finger as a brace alongside of this cheek. Just a little anchoring technique. You know, the better you get at doing this type of stuff, there's so many things that you do intuitively that it becomes more difficult to teach. Because you look at people who struggle with this haircut and you think, why would you struggle with this haircut? I would never struggle with that haircut. But the truth is, like, the better you get at something, the, the harder it becomes to teach. So you have to keep kind of analyzing what you do so you can explain yourself effectively. And this is exactly why I consider myself an educator more than I consider myself an influencer. There's, there's always been this thing that I felt when I was teaching people that I just can't describe. It, it fills my heart in a good way. And it's why I taught at a barber school for 10 years. And most of the time I made $20 an hour or less. And I've been cutting hair a long time. You guys, I've been cutting hair since 2003. I've always made more than $20 an hour working in a, in a shop, I always have. So, you know, taking that pay cut, you know, when I thought about it, I'm like, what sense did that make? But the sense that it made was, you know, I, I really, it felt, it, it filled my heart to help those people. And now um, in my shop, about four of them were prior students of mine. So everything really has come full circle. It's like, sometimes in life, I feel like we're doing things that we, we feel are important, but we don't really understand how it all fits together yet. That's just how life is sometimes. And, and as we go, we start to figure out how it all fits together. Repeat the process here, tipping the trimmer out. Here there's so much more hair. It's so much thicker. That tells me that this bottom line is probably going to be a little more difficult to get out. However, when it's thicker, this top area is going to be easier to blend. So I need to create myself enough space here to finish that that portion of the blend out. I gotta go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off this light for a second, I'm gonna look at some of these comments and see 
on what, what these guys are talking about here. Some of your older videos, you use detachable blades. Do you still use them anymore? No, Derek, I don't, I don't use them anymore. Never knew that technique. Uh, Jesus Rivero, thanks for sharing. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Taper blade, fade blade uh, on the ergo. I, I, I need one of each, and you guys are going to see why. I actually, I actually have a clipper over here with a taper blade on it. And that's, that's exactly what we're gonna use towards the end of the cut to uh, further refine what it is I'm doing. So, all right, I'll get back to the comments in a second, but it's really hard for me. The light is like right behind the phone, so it's really hard for me to look at that and then look back. I can't see nothing. <laughs> so, all right, we're gonna knock this out. I'm gonna do this a little differently. This is a perfect example of how to deal with hair that's thick and how to deal with hair that's not. So now, instead of doing that two click and flick where I was trying to be careful, I know how thick this is. So now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of corner biting. I'm using just a couple teeth and I'm just popping into that line and I have it fully closed when I'm doing this. This might seem a little crazy or a little dangerous to you guys, but I'm using my middle finger to really brace and all I'm using is the corner. So that's why I can use this technique without any concerns and I'm gonna begin popping this lever open one, one little click at a time, and I'm gonna just kind of repeat that process. You guys are gonna see this line just melts away. Whenever I have thick hair, I really like to attack it from the bottom. When I have fine hair, I know I can skip steps, so I kind of like to attack that more from the top. Little by little, one step at a time. Staying in my lane, making it happen. So if you guys are interested in becoming members, it's $5.99 a month. Uh, we're gonna do more content like this. I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to do something special for the members that I just can't do on YouTube because like right now I'm telling you guys, if I leave this video up, YouTube's gonna see that not many people watch it and it's gonna hurt me. And unfortunately, you know, that, that really impacts any potentials I have for making money on YouTube or doing all this type of content. If you if you like it, if you enjoy what I'm trying to share with you here, um, consider being a member. It, it really helps me be able to say, you know what, fuck all this other stuff. I'm gonna work for stuff for my members. You know, that's, that's ultimately what I wanna be able to do. I just wanna help people and this is the best way that I can, that I can do it. And the membership is growing strong. I think we got something like 30 members right now. So, you know, that's, that's coming together. It's starting to happen. All right, I'm gonna make this connection from here to here because I got a little uh, area that I'm dealing with. But you guys already know this haircut's, this haircut's coming out the way we want it to. And if you guys are interested in picking up these clippers or any of the other stuff, I just, just wanted to point out that my code is not 10% off anymore. It's now 15%. So you guys can enjoy uh, those savings if you choose to buy anything from Gamma or Stylecraft. And if you wanna buy anything outside of Gamma or Stylecraft, and you still wanna help me out because you appreciate the, the work that we're putting into these videos, you guys can use Fort Worth Barber Supply. And for those of you guys who are interested in getting this uh, Mr. Cartoon version, I know Fort Worth Barber Supply has a few. They're going to be almost impossible to get. There's not very many. I think each distributor probably got less than I'm just guessing here, but I think each distributor probably got less than 20 or so of these units in. So there's there's not a whole lot um, to go. So even if you can't get this, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's um it's it's basically a 2.0 kind of rebel clipper. So if you want all the benefits, but maybe you don't care so much about the Mr. Cartoon lid, then then you could go ahead and you could scoop that up. So now I'm noticing that you know some of my some of my electric shaver work may not have been perfect, and that's why I have this 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 trimmer is set back a little bit. This this trimmer is not going to hurt me. It's not going to create extra lines. It's just going to be able to help me in my blend at this point. And that's why it's just so critical that you get your stuff set up in a good way, so that you don't run into these issues, or you're always going to run into these issues, but so that you you don't run into the issue where you can't solve these issues. That's a that's a much bigger difference. I can solve all these problems because I have all my setup correctly. All right, so 
Back to the, the Rogue. This is just an Ergo, nine volt motor, magnetic motor. Very, very forgiving when it comes to haircuts. And when I'm cutting hair like Maxwell's, um, this, this hair here, I really don't care what other clippers there are in the world. Like this is the right tool for this job. This is a perfect tool um, for his hair. It can handle the top, it can handle the sides. Now there's people who are gonna come in with thicker hair. And in, in that case, this, this tool might not be the best tool for the job. So again, I just started with it tipped out. I'm trying to build that connection into everything else I did. And stay tuned, y'all, because we got some we got some really good um, shear secrets that I'm going to share with you to really further refine refine the blend. So now we go two clicks, one two, and I'm going to dig the corners. Just digging the corner, tipping it, keeping it at an angle, and not not touching the whole blade down. I mean, I can't express to you how, how important that is because if I tip this clipper flat like that and I put a line in, it gives me a mistake that big. That's gonna be very difficult to get out and it might cause me to have to raise this entire blend up. And when you're starting to zero in on your haircut, exactly how you want it to look, it's really coming together. That's usually when the mistakes happen because it's like a marathon run, you know? You're running this marathon and you see there's light at the end of the tunnel. And what do you do? You start to sprint because you see it. You're gonna make it to the end. And that's when you, you almost got to talk to yourself. I have to talk to myself mentally when I get to this point and say like, all right, it's coming together really good. Let's just, let's just keep, on, keep on the path and don't try to, to force it like Josh Allen did with the Jets. He tried to force it to Stefan Diggs all night long for no reason at all. We would have won that game if he would have kneeled it during halftime. So don't laugh, bro. Don't laugh. I'll mess your hair up, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> But no, it's, it's true though, like, you know, you, you see the end of the tunnel, you know, and, and you in real estate too, like if you see that a deal's coming together and you start pushing it too hard, the client could back off. You know, you, you gotta let some of these things, you gotta let them, gotta let the clipper do the work and you gotta let your, your other stuff speak for itself. Let that do the work. Little by little, um, I've pretty much eradicated most of that line down below uh, there's a little bit of areas here that i'm going to refine but i need to know when and where to to kind of start putting my, my fading tool down and maybe pick up say a taper blade or switch to something more forgiving and i'm not quite 100 percent there yet there is a there is another step or two i want to run but i also need to know when when scissors are the right tool and this is the type. This is the type of stuff that you'll learn, you know, throughout the membership. Like when, when and where. Okay, I think I've done everything I can do with the clippers. Maybe it's time to to switch to a different tool. So currently, I have the number one on. I'm gonna open it two clicks, and I'm only going to be using uh, a few teeth, and I'm gonna start trying to feed in some of these hairs above. A lot of times, you guys are gonna look at your your blend, and you're gonna think like. You're gonna think that you should be working down here when in reality, most of this line is gone. There's a little bit here that needs to be refined, but most of that's gone. So what's causing this transition and not look good is actually the area above, the gradients above. And these are the, these are the things that, you know, nobody talks about. They're, they're, they're hard to know and they really are just earned from experience. I think sometimes we, we have to we have to learn these things from experience, you know? Like my son, the first time ever somebody stole something from him was, was yesterday. It was something really important to him. It was his, his Rubik's Cube. He, he wakes up in the morning using it, he goes to bed using it. And, you know, somebody took it from him and he, he was so upset. And, you know, I told him a million times, you can't leave your stuff laying around. You leave your stuff laying around, sooner or later something's gonna happen. And unfortunately he had to learn that lesson, but that's one of those things that you know, he, he, you, have to, you have to go through those emotions. You have to experience that. And then, and only then do you learn, okay, that was a bad idea, you know. The mother, son, it's his birthday. I get him a present, he throws it right in my face. Busts me right across the, I, I was bleeding. I was bleeding, man. <laughs> yeah. The joys, the joys of parenthood. <laughs> oh, they're innumerable.
But they really are. That's the, that's the worst part. They really are. All right. So I like how this is coming together. I'm going to try to use my half guard now. Notice that I've stayed away from this entirely. And you'll also notice that this side of his haircut um, came together quite well without much of a fight. And the side that I told you from the very beginning that was going to be difficult is this side. So I'm carefully stepping into this and I'm trying to find the, the, right, um, the right series of guards and, and clipper manipulation to get all of this to look the same. And also like, even though I'm filming, even though everything, like I, I see that I'm very close and I feel like I want to rush. So that's like listening to myself and saying like, okay, it doesn't matter how close I am. What matters is that I, I produce the best possible haircut I can. I cannot rush in this step. Really coming together nicely. So it's right here. There's a little bone that protrudes usually behind somebody's ear and it, and it kind of cave, it kind of curves in right there. And this is the area that I see uh, I gotta refine a little bit, and this is a perfect time to switch to a tape. Now I have an X Ergo somewhere, um, but I also have the Saber, and the Saber is just one of these tools, man. It's just so underrated. Like nobody uses this tool. Uh, I've not really seen as many people that are in love with this as I am, but when you put a taper blade on here, it just it's just so forgiving to cut with. And in certain situations like this one, it's just the tool that I want to I want to pick up, I want to use. It has a little bit of weight that'll stop me from making mistakes. And I can kind of start with it in the open position. It's going to be a really good tool to back up my fade blade. Something when I need a little bit more length, you know, I want to have the hair a little bit longer. That's, that's perfect timing to use the tapered blade. And as I go over some of these curly areas, I'm, I'm just watching it. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I'm, I'm just watching it kind of really start to come together um, before my eyes. I ordered the new uh, iPhone, y'all. I got the new iPhone on my way to work today. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that new uh, Pro Max because once I get that, hopefully that camera is a little better than this one. You know, cell phones, cell phones really don't show 100% what the image actually looked like in person they're good for you know capturing other things but when it comes to haircuts if you guys ever tried to edit a haircut photo and you crank the shadows you'll see it just creates a whole bunch of issues that ain't really even there so hopefully that new cell phone doesn't do that and we can go live more often like this um in the comments man hit me in the comments if you guys are enjoying this content if you guys are figuring like you're, you're picking some stuff up if you if you feel like you're learning here, we, we do appreciate it. We've, we've held 30 to 40 people uh, throughout this entire live, which would certainly fill up my barbershop and then some. So if you guys were all here uh, right next to me, this place would be pretty damn crowded. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys all for tuning in and hanging out with me. But now we're going to get into those scissor techniques, and we're also going to do the edge up, and we're going to get the rest of this side of the blend uh, to lay perfectly. As you can see, this was the side that I had to fight with a little bit more, but now with the taper blade on, I was able to get into some of those areas and, and really uh, refine them. So, all right, that's looking pretty good. That tells me that I'm about ready to pick up the scissors in that step. Back here, I can see a little bit of half guard and then we're done. And then we pick up the scissors and we will start to really um, dive into some of those little secrets. There, there is some secrets with the scissors. I don't know why nobody ever talks about them. People like to act like scissors don't exist or like they're just not a useful tool, which is completely false. Barbers feel like a lot of times when I would have them in, in barber school, the first cuts we would do would be long haircuts on mannequins. And they'd be like, I'm not here to cut no girl's hair. I'm trying to be a barber, man. Well, the people that I would that would say that, I would say, what makes you a good barber? Because any idiot can squeeze a pair of scissors and watch hair come off, right? So is it really about that? No. It's about how you hold the section, how you manipulate the hair, 
how you actually section it out and how you can cut it. You know, any idiot could take a pair of clippers and shave somebody's head. Would that make him the greatest barber on earth? No, it certainly would not. So it's more, uh, more or less something where, you know, you gotta keep, you gotta keep growing. And you guys already know this because you're sitting here and you're, you're watching this live demonstration, which is more than what a lot of people would do. A lot of people already know it all or think they do. And that's a dangerous place to be because you can't grow. If you think you know it all, you can't grow. I was just thinking like, don't ever go to classes, y'all, because that might expose you to new ideas. And at this day and age, you don't need new ideas. You already know it all. Why would you go? <laughs> When you put it in that in that way, how many of you guys watched that live with uh, Chris Basio and Marvy Marv? I thought that was great. I really, uh, I really enjoyed. I mean, Chris Basio is the real deal, though. Like this dude is the real deal, and he brought receipts and he he proved six figure barbering is 100% possible. Um, not only is it possible, like it really should be, it really should be something that all of us. Can, can obtain and you know realistically you can make a lot of money in this business but you got to work hard I know a lot of people come to this business from other businesses because either they couldn't make it in what they were doing before or they didn't have good work ethic and they think that just magically when they show up and become a barber that something is going to change which is not true at all let's see if I can get this camera kind of straight so it doesn't look like which you kind of straight, which way is, there we go. That's the straight area. So, all right. So as we can see, when I comb his, his hair down, the moose kind of did its job. It's got his hair laying down a little bit. Um, the edge is going to be, you know, fairly easy to cut. I grabbed my sharpest trimmers right now. And actually, I'm going to show you guys something real quick um, with the trimmers. So if you guys want your trimmers to cut really good, Watch how loose these actually are. That's actually a little bit too loose. I could, I could hear it. But I do not want this blade tight. I want to keep that blade loose, and yours are going to hit just as good as mine. That's not so much with every brand, because some brands like Babelis, the spring is actually underneath that, so that's not really going to have any impact. But for, like, Protégés, um, Sabres, really many of the Gamma trimmers, you're, you're going to get a little better performance out of that. So one of the other things you see me doing is I'm anchoring. I'm trying to touch them up here, here, here. So I got all these points of contact that really steadies my hand out. And now I'm just going to finagle with it. I remember um, teaching somebody, I'm not going to name no names. They were working at my shop. They were doing an edge up on this guy. And the edge up wasn't bad, but it wasn't done. And they were, they were going to let him go. So I went over there and I was like, yo, let me, let me show you some things. And he was surprised because like he's ready to let this client go. And I had to work at it for like five more minutes before I got the edge up to my satisfaction. And he just looked at me. He was like, you really, you'll really work that hard to get the edge up good? And I was like, absolutely. Sometimes it happens quick. You know, sometimes I get it right away and, and many times I don't. But I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to make it perfect. But you know what was cool about that? Right after that, he did a client later in the day, and the edge up was so much better. And it just it just took me showing him and just pointing out the fact that hey man, it, it takes a little bit longer sometimes. Just just do it, do it all the way, and you'll be you'll be fine. So I just I just know that there's a lot of people out there who who don't know just these little tiny things, and you know adding them all up together, it really can make a huge difference. When you have somebody with vertical bars that, that go this this far down, really important that we just keep them straight. Don't try to push that in. I want to preserve all the hairline I can, and that's why I'm brushing this this way. Any of those little loose hairs that, that stick out and make my edge not look good, that's, that's what I'm looking to cut. I am very happy with how this edge up is coming together. We're going to use a little tiny bit of enhancements to make it perfect but we have a couple other steps to do before we get to that 
But I just wanted to, I just wanted to lay that, that foundation real quick. And that's looking good. So let's pull him back out a little bit. I'll continue with my edge. I'm just gonna try to shake out the C cup just a little bit. There's not a, there's not a long, you know, there's not a lot of hair down here. There's really nothing. So I just kind of try to put a little bit of a line right there. We'll see it better when I go back with the razor. And do the same thing on this side here. So you need a, you need a pair of trimmers that's set really close for, for this type of stuff. Otherwise, you're not even gonna be able to see it. And then if I have any issues with my electric shaver area, uh, this is kind of the tool that's, this is kind of like I'm pressing the emergency button. I don't pull this out unless I absolutely need to. That's, that's what this is for. So now it's time to get into these scissor techniques and uh, let's, let's break this down. You guys ready? This is the part that, that a lot of you guys um, don't understand how the scissors work and how you can really refine your blend with them. The, the first and most obvious is, clipper, is scissor over comb. So with scissor over comb, I'll be able to get some of these curls that aren't cooperating. I'm using my pinky to anchor. I'm moving my shears with only my thumb and I'm going to comb through it against the grain. And I'm going directly with just the tips of the shears to the area that I want to refine. Right there. And I will use texturizing shears. I'm sure there's probably somebody in the um, comments asking me why I'm not using them yet. With fine hair, if you make it too thin, it won't look good either. It's, it's for me, it's, it's always been best to pretty much try to use these the most that I can before uh, I try to do anything else. So right here, just a little bit of a curl that I don't like the way it's laying. And here, this is, this is the technique that, that a lot of people don't use. So essentially, what I'm doing here is I'm taking it, I'm resting it on the head, and I'm chopping into some of these sections. Very important that I rest the bottom blade on the head, and I close the scissors. So if we're probably a little too close, I'm going to back up just a little bit. All right, so that's where we'll use that in some situations just to break up certain dark spots without getting into anything crazy. You guys see the effect that's having? This isn't a step that you're gonna run like crazy with and do everywhere. It's just in some of the areas that you're struggling or that you're not getting the blend the way you want it, this is definitely a good technique that you could try. And now that same technique can actually be used with the texturizing shears where I can literally lay it right on the scalp and I can cut. The only difference in the two techniques is the texturizing shears has a, have a bunch of different teeth that cut. Yeah. That's looking good. So I know for a fact, I did what I could with my shears. I know for a fact that I'm gonna switch back to my closer cutting clipper and I'm gonna begin dragging just a corner. shear cutting technique that we're going to use actually we're going to do a little bit more shear over comb on the rest of the head but i just wanted to show you guys this one here this is a this is a pair of curved shears and this is really good for getting all those little flyaways and shaping the blend so i usually just try to get the hair down here in the y of the shear more so than in the tips if I do that in the tips, it's very possible I could make a mistake. It's much better when I just kind of glide across the top and I can make sure that the silhouette of my hair is laying the way I really want it to. You shouldn't be cutting a ton of hair doing this. 
you're mainly looking to cut you know maybe some of the curls that aren't laying right or some of the hair that's really sticking out um, in any funny way but having a pair of curved shears is, is one way to do it but you don't have to have curved shears to do this you can still do this with your regular shears if you just use the Y of the shear the inside of the shear I can do the same thing it just takes a little longer again it's kind of one of those things that you know when I have the right equipment it just makes life a little bit easier over here the hair is a lot more normal on this side I'm able to kind of do this uh, in a much more traditional way And I'll show you the uh, final, the final trick with the shears. We're going to use it to further refine the edge up and really square those corners off. 30 to 40 people in here, 25 thumbs up. I appreciate y'all so much for joining me um, as we as we've done this entire haircut live and in front of you guys. There's been no hocus pocus. No, no camera angles. I'm showing you every single thing there is to show you. Um, all the good and all the techniques that you could possibly use to, to get the hair to lay the way that you want it to. So this clipper has a paper blade on it. It's always worth it to try and uh, use a couple different clippers because some of them are going to cut a little bit differently than others and you might find just the length that you need uh, to further refine, refine your, your blend. So that's kind of where we're at. We're at that step here where I'm really starting to get close to the end. I have a one on, it's about halfway open and I'm just trying my best to lay down any of these funky curls that are maybe not going my way. That new Mr. Cartoon, it just, it does look really cool. Like when I look down on this clipper, this is, this is one that I just want to pick up. You know, I feel, I feel kind of inspired by the artwork on here and the success that Mr. Cartoon has, has enjoyed in his business. And, you know, I, I, uh, I just want to keep, I just want to wake up in the morning. I just want to keep fighting. I want to keep grinding despite what YouTube throws at me, despite what the rest of the world throws at me. Yesterday I had uh, um, put a brand new air conditioner in my house, cost me $8,500, unforeseen. But yo, we live in Florida, what are we supposed to do? You know, we, we gotta have air conditioning. My kids were running around, it was so hot. It was, uh, it was an awful couple of days. And finally I broke down and said, you know what, enough is enough. But now I gotta, you know, I gotta try to find a way to, to work that money back, that's all. So, all right, let's, uh, let's put the finishing touches. Let's use the razor, do some enhancements, and we'll use our, our final couple little scissor tricks here. We're not gonna do that until after we do the razor. And uh, let's make sure that I got all those longer hairs cut, and then I didn't miss any. Sometimes you'll kind of hover the trimmer and pull it back down. I love holding my trimmers this way. This is that pencil grip when I can kind of really anchor on him. And it just, it feels real comfortable. I'll go ahead, I'm gonna use a little bit of shave gel. When I mean like a little bit, I mean just a little bit. We really didn't go too far into his hairline, uh, but I just, I don't want to cut him. I don't want him to feel any, any discomfort. And I want to just get this, this part of the edge perfect. I have my razor sitting over here in Barberside. Hey, I appreciate the $3. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I forgot about Super Chats. I haven't had one in so long. All right, here we go. We're going to start in the middle. I'm going to comb this down. And again, I'm anchoring. Um, let me get a little closer with my camera. Sorry, lost you for a second there. You got a good view of my teeth? There we go. Okay. So I'm going to anchor... This is why we hold our razor this way, because I can use these fingers as an anchor and then I can kind of tip this. So my goal here is I use my middle finger, I put it down 
and I'm not really trying to make a ton of strokes. For those of you guys who may struggle with cutting people in the beginning, which is totally normal, by the way, um, a lot of you are moving the razor like too many strokes, like one, two, three strokes at the top. But if your razor has a bend in it, if it has a problem in it, um, you're going to wind up cutting them three times. So usually I try to just roll the razor nice and easy back and forth. The pressure that I'm putting down on the scalp is, is very, very minimal. And, you know, that's, that's going to help prevent you from cutting people. That's why the anchoring part is so important because I could just try to hover the razor and maybe tap them in there. I'm just never going to be accurate like that, right? So this is kind of important too. Let me show you this real quick. So I like to kind of begin my first couple of flicks with the razor up here as I follow into that C cup, right? But then I'm going to pull the skin this way and I'm going to follow back up in the opposite direction. That's what really allows me to get that line perfect every single time. And we'll lift the skin up really high and cut any hair that may be too close to his ear. The Uno is great for that. If you don't feel comfortable, you know, making that stroke like that, you guys can, you can use your Uno single foil electric shaver just to get into those, those hard to reach spots. And we will do the same thing on this side. On this side, it's a little different because I can only use the heel of the blade, right? So I'll begin towards the bottom of this vertical bar. But I warned you guys, don't cut too deep here. You don't want to push the bottom of this vertical bar like this way. You know, that, that, could, that could be a problem. It'll make the front of this edge up just look disproportionate. So on this side, I kind of like to just come directly underneath and use the tip and follow it down. And I can also use the tip you know, back here. Yo, shout out to the Denver uh, airport, the TSA, who took one of these other razors. There's not many of them left. And they took the razor holder from me when I was flying out of Denver without a razor in it because, you know, they, they were just doing their job, I guess. But I just thought, like, I was like, is this going to cause me to miss my flight? Because they wanted to call all these managers and everything. I was like, it's a razor holder. It does not have a razor in it. I mean, this would be fairly simple to understand. But, you know... They got that, they got me for that. All right, so now I'm gonna come against the grain. And really, this is where you're gonna see a couple little hairs um, stick out over top of your nice clean, your edge up sometimes. And before we spray any type of enhancements or anything in here, we really wanna get this, we really wanna get this as close to perfect as, as we can. I really like what I'm starting to see, but usually after I use the razor, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna travel back through it one more time. Just a little bit, just here and there. We want this to be perfect. Unlike the Bills game against the Jets. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, unlike the Jets game against the Bills, that was just a sloppy game, it was kind of hard to watch. But you know, the Philadelphia Eagles didn't look so, so shit hot last night either, so I'm just saying, you know, they're, a lot of teams are not going to be what they were. They lost two coaches. They lost quite a few players. They're not quite the same team. We're the same team. We're the same team that, you know, <laughs> gets the fans excited and, and disappoints them, you know? You know, I'm a Bears fan, so I can't Or Bears. Yeah. The Bears. Let's not even talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I know how all Chicago fans feel because when I was in Chicago, there was my Uber driver, he said, if you look out to the right, you'll see Loser Field. <laughs> now, I know that Soldier Field. I was surprised that he said that. And he, I said, you call it Loser Field? He said, yeah. He said, that's all that happens there. Yeah. And you know what? I wasn't going to argue with him. Because <laughs> a lot of losing does happen there. <laughs> Rusty's in the house. Right. What's up, buddy? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> all right. So... Now let's throw a little bit of enhancements in here. I'm gonna show you guys something that you're gonna love if you if you ever use it. I'm telling you guys now, the spray guns and all that stuff, man, it's it's done. This is this is the product you want to use. I've linked it in the description. It's called Red. I was gonna do a full video on this, um, but haven't gotten around to this. But watch how watch how good this stuff works, and there's no clogs. It's just it's just easy to use. So I'm not going to go crazy with this. I'm just trying to 
get it to blend with the rest of the hair. Some of these light spots are not gonna be as, be as visible. And we're gonna get him just, just right. I can hold it a little further away and get exactly the look that I wanna get out of it. We're using that Tomb 45 color card. Hey, by the way, I was wondering, man, how do you guys feel about the Babelis, the new Babelis tools? It looks like they have the changing, you know, the changing battery thing going on. And I'm supposed to be getting them from Fort Worth Barber Supply soon, so I'll be releasing some videos on them when, whenever they get here. But uh, I was just kind of thinking about the removable batteries from the Oster Volts and different clippers that I've, I've used. The Oster Volt allowed you to charge it with the battery being removable at the same time. I thought, I thought that was actually pretty smart, but it looks like Babelis, the Babelis one has to be charged um, on a separate charger, so that kind of sucks. I'm trying not to get in your guys' way, so I can tell you, I'll find the right way to do this here. All right, yeah, we'll go about right here. So this, this product right here is really as good as it gets. I mean, who wants to fight with, with their, their spray gun every single time and have to deal with that? I, I, I certainly don't. And, you know, I, I'd much rather have a product like this that I could spray in as, as fine of a mist as I want and I can really get, I can really get the most out of it. So now, any little hairs that are just not quite going my way, little ones just above that line that I sprayed in, I want to make sure I take my time and really get this perfect because the next step, we're going to put just a little bit of 245 pencil. This really makes the edge stand out really good. And this haircut is going to be almost done. Hey, how much should I charge him for his haircut, y'all? How much? What do you guys charge at your shops? I'm just, I'm just curious. Drop it in the comments. Also, what, what tools are you using right now? What's your setup looking like? Y'all share, share some of what you're doing with me real quick before we get off. Because we're getting to the end here. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to know which, what you guys are doing in your shop. And I know everywhere in the country is a little different, you know. Florida is a pretty expensive place to live, especially where we where we live. You know, I know. Um, actually, you know, by and large, it's getting expensive to live down here anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just in Buffalo a little bit ago, and I was I was pretty surprised by how expensive the housing has gotten uh, there. Even even my dad's house has went up significantly in value, and. Uh, if you guys ever seen it, you guys would probably, probably be like, no, I wouldn't want to live there, but I'm surprised it cost that much. <laughs> but you know, there we go. So now what I'm doing, after I put in that line, I'll take my trimmers and I kind of do that raking thing that we talked about towards the beginning of the video. And uh, my goal is to, to blend that like ash line kind of in there. You can also use your finger and kind of kind of work it that way, just just like that there. So I just got a little bit left to do here. A lot of those videos you see where trimmers just look like they're hitting super hard. A lot of it is some of these enhancements. Um, these trimmers do hit super hard, but I think we're almost at a point where you know. Trimmers, trimmers are uh, trimmers are really getting good. I mean, things things are really getting better than than they used to be um, back in the day. So now, if you see anything else that you guys can fix? We're just gonna go through the the face six, the detailing portion, just just a tiny bit of uh, detailing there, and make sure that we we got this thing the way we want it to be. Now the last part that we're going to do too, this, this comes to getting a good photo out of it, but I'm actually, I'm actually going to take a little bit of um, talc powder 
and I'm gonna put a little bit of talc powder on him just to get off all the loose hairs, but also it's gonna create a little bit uh, of, of a backlight to my blend. It's gonna make his skin look a little bit lighter when I get my photo. So think of that as just, just another little, little extra you can do. And we are gonna put a product in his hair to get the rest of these hairs to lay down. And I'm gonna get a really good picture out of this and hopefully Rusty's gonna make me a quick thumbnail that I can post on this video so it gets more than a hundred views. <laughs> How many of you guys been hanging out for this this whole this whole live man? Sound off in the comments real quick. I wanna I wanna see how many of y'all hung out. Hang on, I'm gonna go grab a, a product. I'll be right back. Keep him busy for a second. Keep him busy. <laughs> I got you. What's up chat? <laughs> We got it. We got it. Sorry, I just moved all my stuff on my station. I'm um, back over here. Let me turn this light off so I could actually see. Yo, Adam's been in this thing the whole time. Awesome, man. I really appreciate y'all. So, all right, I'm just using a very small amount of product, probably even less than I put on my finger. And uh, all I really want to do with this is just get any of these like little flyaways to lay down and give them like a little bit of shine and hold it all together nice. And we'll take our brush and I'll get that to lay down. You might get a hair or two that kind of pops through and makes your edge up not look perfect. So if I have to, uh, I'll go back for that. But that's pretty much a wrap. Because with curly hair, man, you can watch, um, you can wash your curly hair and it's going to lay one way. You wake up the next day, it might lay a little bit different. So. My goal is to try to comb this out as many times as possible and just make sure that, you know, his edge up's gonna look perfect when he wakes up in the morning. So that's what we got right here. I'm gonna hang out for a second here. I'm gonna answer your questions, um, but quickly, I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take my photo real quick. I'll jack up this light. Hope I have a memory card in here. And we'll take a quick photo of the cut and we'll make sure that this becomes the thumbnail to the cut. So, probably help if I took the lens cap off. Got my settings pretty well dialed in. I think I'll turn that ISO down a little bit. Damn. Boy, that thing is looking fire right there. You gotta take photos of your work. Like, it's funny, man. You could, you know, I could be the busiest barber in the world. It wouldn't make a difference. I'm always gonna have a camera on my station. I'm always going to continue to try to find ways to, to advertise myself and I don't care how busy I get, how many people walk in here and want me to cut their hair. Like, I'm going to do that because I prioritize it, you know? He said, how can I make my fades longer um, on the length? There's there's some steps that we'll do um, in the membership. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that a lot. Uh, so, you know, if I wanted his hair to be longer, the fade really wouldn't have changed too much. I would have just addressed the top a little bit different. That's, that's really the only thing there. I would have addressed the top a little bit differently, and that would have been that. So, I'm going to free him up, get him out of the chair, let him go on his way. I'm going to chat with you guys for a few minutes, and I'm going to read some of them comments. If you guys got any other questions about the haircut, anything that... You know, you feel like I could have explained a little better, something you think I kind of glossed over, um, please let me know. Especially you guys that have been hanging in there throughout the entire cut. I really appreciate that. And I'm just seeking, I'm just seeking po positive, I'm just seeking any type of feedback. It doesn't have to be positive, but I'm seeking feedback so I can improve my teaching, you know, as, as I go. And last step to the whole thing, we're going we're gonna to chill them out. This is a nice aftershave. This is the Gamma Evo. Use this. This will help his skin kind of heal up from the skin fade and you know feel good and not leave him with any razor burn and stuff like that. Even though, as you can see, he don't he don't have no redness or no razor burn. But whenever we do a skin fade, um, it's it's always going to irritate that top layer of skin. All right, brother, you all set. My man, appreciate you, man. Appreciate Thank you so you much bro. for coming in here. 
Thank you, man. And uh, let's see what you guys got to say here. 35 likes. That's what's up. Let's see here. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. Right, brother. Take care. We'll Good. talk to you soon. Make sure right? y'all like, comment, subscribe. Best <laughs> barber in the area, I'm telling you, man. As you guys can see. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Brother, thank you so much. Thank man. you, man. Take it easy. See ya. So the enhancements that I use, I just seen that, that comment right there. This this product right here is called Red. It's uh it's I have it actually linked in the description, even to this video. It's set as a permanent link to the description. Um, but what's really cool about this product is um if I hold it further away, and it, it never seems to clog, and the nozzle on this is just great. So I'm all done with enhancement guns. I think that um I've wasted a lot of time with those and, and I'm kind of grateful that I've decided to move on from that. So, you know, that's that's one of those things that I would definitely say um, make it happen. So if you guys like content like this and you're enjoying it, man, please consider the membership. I really would appreciate it. You know, super chats and everything is nice. But if you guys like content like this where I could get really detailed, we could literally crawl through these haircuts. We could really give you the information you need to get better at this. Um, consider consider that so great content I've been learning so much from your channel it's awesome Adam Leitner thank you so much man I know you've been rocking this entire time uh, he told him to stop being late for his appointments he's already gone I'll let him know next time dropping gems on, gems on him thank you man he said notifications will be turned on from now on if you guys like this um, a lot you leave me some comments drop the drop the like man I'll um I'll do my best to try to arrange doing this like like once a week maybe. I mean, we're 91 minutes, it's gonna kill my channel, but it is it is alive and you know, the thing about it is, is like at the end of the day, if you guys are here and you're enjoying this, I'm still I'm still gonna do it anyways, you know? That'll probably, <laughs> it'll kill my, uh, my channel a little bit. But uh, the next thing we got coming up for you guys at 4 p.m., uh, the video on on those new Mr. Cartoon Rebels. Maybe maybe next time we'll, we'll wind up using that one. Uh, Coach Key says, I get lost in my blend and, and find myself raising my faith. That's, that's very easy to do. And that's why, like, if we, if we were to rewind this back a little bit and go back to the point where I attacked my blend with, do you guys remember what I attacked that with? I didn't attack it with a regular open taper. I used both clipper manipulation and a number one guard on it. So if you guys were unclear about how I did that, I'll just show you real quick. It's actually a half, but it don't make a difference. But all right, so what I did was I took my one, I opened it two clicks, I actually manipulated my clipper length to leave it longer and began setting in my guideline flicked out. And then I began lowering the ass end of the clipper until this blade was flat on the head. All right, and whenever you're blending, your clipper should be tipped on an angle, or if it doesn't look like it's on an angle, a lot of times it's actually it's actually one part of the blade being touched or the other. Sometimes you're looking at barbers on YouTube and you'll get this view. But what this view doesn't show you, if I turn it, is actually that part of the clipper is not on the head. So you'll think that they're touching the entire blade. I'm gonna tell you, half of the blade or at least keeping the clipper on an angle when you're blending. Keep the blade fairly horizontal when you're setting in your skin lines, when you're setting in your guidelines. So that's the difference. Guidelines, we can set them in horizontally whenever we're, we're blending, you know, corner or half the blade. So I've been dropping a lot of shorts on uh, that, and if you guys wanna check that out too, you can. I'm trying to release a short like every single day, unless I got some like long form uh, content, content coming up, so. David Barry he says, this is exactly what we need. Real life scenarios, no more perfect te texture tutorials. Yo, we, we all, you know, that's the thing. We, we get some of these haircuts that come in here that are gonna be perfect, they're gonna be easy to do. I'm gonna be able to show off my skills on them, but really you're showing off your skills on, on something, you know, easy. That's like, at the same time, you're gonna have so many clients that come in here with their hair is just really difficult. They have weird colics. They got, you gotta do certain things that ain't right. And um, when we show those type of things, YouTube doesn't really reward us. So that's probably why you don't see a whole lot of that stuff. But I'd be more than willing to show you guys really anything through the membership tab because that's essentially like a private video. The rest of YouTube doesn't see it. They can't view it. Um, they don't know anything about it. And in that case, we can, we can kind of cut loose a little bit over there and I, can, and I can do stuff like that. 
So I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, any suggestions, anything you want to see, drop them down below in the comment section below the video. Don't drop them in the live because I won't be able to see them. But I do pay attention to you guys' um, comments, and I'm trying to make content that really um, impacts the, the membership. So if you are a member or if you're considering it, drop a comment down below. I'm looking at all these. Even if I don't answer all of them, I'm, I'm checking them out, and I'll take those into consideration uh, when, I, when I make my future content, whether it's private or, or member only. So... This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I appreciate you. Neil says, this was boss as usual. Eddie the Barber uh, signing off for now. I'll see you guys back here at 4 o'clock. We got the Mr. Cartoon. It's kind of cool little video. You guys will see any and everything you'd want to know about that. All right? Appreciate you too, Jordan. Thank you guys so much. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'm Mr. Eddie Barber, and I got another client coming, so I'm about to go eat some.